what is your favorite sim the one sim that you have the go-to sim yeah we have a religious war <laughs> easy, easy. <laughs> greetings romies and welcome to romcoms the podcast sharing the joy of sim racing and motorsports welcome thanks for stopping by i am serta and with me i have the man with the voice of a thousand angels cody how's it going hey it's going pretty good i'm excited to start this new journey this new adventure we got a lot of cool topics in the dock and uh i'm excited to uh you know be three white dudes in a podcast that's more of what the world needed and thanks for being here in the podcast because for you it's like 8 30 in the morning or something like that so yikes and you know i can i can sacrifice sleeping in on a saturday every now and then that's all right and it's not only cody and i we have the guilty party of the podcast the man who pushed for it to happen ike how are you ike i'm doing absolutely fine sir to, yeah i but this was this is something that I've I've always enjoyed doing is is podcasting, talking about things that uh, that matter. And uh, what was the expression that I gave you in the first place? I have many opinions, not all of them correct, but all of them will, will get some kind of response. All right, so welcome everyone to this first podcast. You're gonna be hearing things that we're gonna try. You're gonna be hearing things that we're not gonna do ever again. This is the first episode of them all. Cody, Ike, anything you guys want to talk about? It's a difficult, uh, yeah, it's been a long week. It's been a long year in sim racing, to be fair. Uh, I think the first thing, funnily enough, I think the first thing that I wanted to speak about is your opinions of the rampant cheating that we've been exposed to in the early part of 2023 and the impact that it might be having on sim racing because we've had declarations of sim racing is dead that it's over for sim racing back to your cupboards and things like that and i just don't see it personally i mean one thing is cheating has always been there cheating has always been there in in computer gaming I remember with my ZX Spectrum when we used to work with pokes and peaks and, and whatever. And I remember that Master Loser got a lot of flack because he exposed the possibilities of cheating, for example, in Race Room and in Assetto Corsa Competizione. But what you're saying is that cheating is now in esports sim mm -hmm. racing, in the sim racing that's bringing money. Yeah, the, the question you need to ask is, is it the... Is the cheating bringing in the money or is the money bringing the cheating? Because the, the stakes are so much higher now. There's money on the line. Right, yeah. If the prize is a life-changing amount of money, you know, or it's, you know, what most people make in a year, then yeah, absolutely. There's going to be people who are motivated to, you know, bend the rules a little bit mm. and, uh, you know, make sure that... that they have that edge over the other guy because also you know may maybe there's i think especially after the the first couple incidents of cheating came out it honestly made it worse because oh well if the other guys are cheating those are just the guys who get caught well who else am i competing against that's cheating and not getting caught now i have to cheat just to compete yeah so yeah. the problem begets itself yes absolutely and then the next question is how do we stop it so one thing is for sure, cheating has always been a part of motorsports. We yeah. all know the, the cases, for example, in Formula One, but it's not only Formula One. I think th from the moment two people said, okay, let's see who's the fastest, one of them was thinking, how can I do something to my car that makes it faster, even if I have to bend the rules? The other thing is, and that's what Master Loser was doing when he was showing the cheating, is the companies that that allow the, their systems to be used for esports by far don't do enough to avoid cheating. There is a lot of uh, cheating also going on in other esports, mm. but the companies that do the software have implemented different ways of at least minimizing the cheating you don't, you're never going to be able to avoid it completely you'll never be able to to eliminate it completely but at least to avoid and i think that's something that the companies have to start looking into yeah i think that's the that's the thing that we're all going to agree on 
is the it's the developers that need to do something what that is i mean we'll see but they need to do something these these people these bad actors who are tainting our hobby and as you rightly say as well it's, it's not as though it's just in sim racing it's also in real racing as well i mean we only need to look back what less than a month no i think it's just over a month now and the acura dpi that was not just under pressuring their tires at daytona they were modifying the data for the tire tires going to the regulators so it was a conscious decision to take that advantage and obviously imsa has have responded as they should and we do need that response from developers as well because they are the where the buck stops now one thing i i think there's gonna have to be more money on the line so that companies start realizing they're losing money if they allow cheating i don't think that we are at the point where the companies are conscious enough of it well i would say that for a lot of these companies like you know especially those holding events and i guess we also have to kind of define what companies mean because because there's the organizations that are, you know, hosting these, and then there's the developers and publishers, and sometimes those are the same entities, but sometimes they're not. For example, like, I don't think Codemasters hosts their own F1 esports stuff. Uh, I might be wrong there, but, like, do they? Because as far as I'm aware, the, the cheating that's occurred has been with stuff that's not, you know, affecting Codemasters directly. You know, the prize money is not theirs that they're putting up. There's no direct incentive for them to address it there's plenty of other incentive for them to yeah. affect it but it's not their money that they're well, putting on the line my understanding of the situation is that it is a third party that is using the formula one license to host those events okay so yes it's not reflecting directly on codemasters and and ea but simultaneously the FIA and FOM are going to start looking into the allegations of cheating and the first place they're going to go is Codemasters and say, why Why are we getting these reports of cheating in your game? Why haven't yeah. you put an anti-cheat in? Yeah, I think that's the quickest way for them to lose their license and I think Absolutely. the sooner they know that, the better. Because, you know, right now there's, there's no one else making f1 games at least not uh explicitly there's race sim studio but you know that's legally distinct and in the you know at this going... point nearly open source is that of course <laughs> yeah i was going to say i was going to say at what point do you just give up on the formula one games and just go for the mods i mean Assetto Corsa, R Factor 2, we can talk about them in the Automobilista same breath. Automobilista 2. And AMS yeah. 2, of course. Yeah. We can speak about all of them in the same breath. The quality on those mods, let's just emphasize that, is far and away anything that you get within the Formula 1 22, 23 games. The, the full game because they are because they are going for a different public remember Assetto Corsa Automobilista 2 the mods for Assetto Corsa and so on they are made for people who want to r sim race they want a simulation as near as possible mm. to the real forces and the real difficulty of racing the formula the F1 games from Codemasters now EA are going for a broader public for those who want to sit with their g29 at their desk and spend 15 minutes feeling like a formula one racer without having to put all the effort which is not putting those negatively i love sim <laughs> Kate. i i love the f1 games i there is a different mindset in me when I start the F1 game or an, a, any other sim gate than when I sit in front of Automobilista 2 or in front of Assetto Corsa and start one of the Formula 1, don't call, don't call them Formula 1. Yes, yeah. Again, again, but why, are the, why is it the official Formula 1 game isn't aiming for that precedent? And why are we using a, a, a what is at best a simcade for esports is then the question. Money. Bingo. Money. Oh, of course. No, no, of course. I'm just arguing for the legitimacy of the, of the, of the conflict, not conflict, the legitimacy of the platform and the game as a sim and therefore any cheating that takes place in the where therein is i mean it doesn't 
make that much of a difference, does it really? Yeah, I th so I think we may be getting a little bit sidetracked, because of course, you know, Gran Turismo also is not as, uh, you know, deep a simulation as, as some of the others that we've covered, but it also has, you know, esports associated with it. Yeah. The the issue is that, you know, the F1 game with the F1 license, where people host F1 championships, real esports stuff with real money on the line, is just kind of, you know, the, the cheating is not really being addressed in a meaningful way by the mm -hmm. developers. My question is, why? And I think there's a couple of, of reasons behind that. Uh, first off is motivation. I don't think that yeah, until it's their money in the esports prize pool that's being affected on the line here, I don't think they're going to care so much because it's a niche thing. And until it starts affecting their sales, uh, I think they're going to put their their development manpower elsewhere. And that's that's kind of also point two, I think, is that they can only put their development manpower to so many things, and they're probably wanting to, you know. Do other features or do, you know, driver career season three or whatever for the next game rather than actually, you know, control the cheating in a meaningful way. And then also... Putting more things for you to dress. Yeah, yeah, there you go. More cosmetic or whatever. Uh, you know, the, the frills and things that sell more copies to people just wanting to buy the new one versus... F1 2018 or F1 2019 or F1 2020, which that's not on Steam anymore. But um, you know, without wishing to, out. yeah, without wishing to uh, to show my age, uh, how many hats can you put on your Formula One car? That is a <laughs> reference now, isn't it? That is a like, throwback. Yeah. Goodness. Yeah, I think I I to 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 follow up to conclude conclude the this particular subject. I think I think the points that we've all made are. are are about as good as they're going to get. It requires the the developers to be invested, and it requires the user base, the player, to comply with any developments they want to make. It's going to be a very yin and yang kind of relationship between both the developers and and the user base. It's just going to we're just going to have to ride through this really rough. I mean, of course, there is one way how you could stop it, and that's all the people who are going to be racing in an eSport sim racing or sim cage racing or whatever thing are all in the same room are using homologated computers that cannot be opened where they just put their own controllers into yeah. it be it uh, Fnatic, be it uh, SimuQ, be it whatever they use, but the computers are offered by the company or companies doing the eSports and there is nothing else that can be installed. They all have the same image. And the only thing that is different is, of course, the drivers for the controllers, and that's it. But I don't think that this is something that is going to be used because, of course, one of the things that the companies selling the sims or sim cades want to show is, look, you can be your own Kimi Raikkonen or your own Bottas or your own Verstappen from home. Yeah, absolutely. Side point. It's taking control for just a second. Can we uh, make a FIA homologated PC sticker? I want a homologated <laughs> PC sticker. That's what I want in my life right now. Let's see. I gotta. If there's enough it money behind that, it has to happen. We have merch, don't we? Let's see. FIA homologated. Oh yeah, we can. We can do a Rom Rom homologated. We want. We PC want. Yes. Sticker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need. If you have. If we have. If there are any cleverer people than us that can come up with really decent slogans that can can make a Vrom Vrom FIA homologation sticker specifically for PCs, please. We are all is. That would be amazing. <laughs> mm. Well, is is that the sticker that you're referring to? Is that just the one that's like the the like yellow or white? rectangle it's like in compliance with fia yes. standard whatever yeah in compliance yeah. with rom rom standards i could do that first we should have to set up the standards but yeah no 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 it's just because you, you know for a fact that if that was to happen the standards would be arbitrary anyway 
like the, it would be it would be bottom tier hardware because it's it's f122 so you don't need a, a mega pc to, to to get 120 fps out of it it would just it would just need to be a competent rig and they would do it as quickly as, and as cheaply as possible. So you're going to be looking at i3s with GTX 2030s, 2050s, or something in there that uh, that just about does the job. It just gets 120 FPS, and it will be hooked up to budget 120 FPS screens as well. You can see you can see it happening right now, but it will have that FIA homologated sticker on it because that's what they have to do. I'm gonna nominate you head of uh, merchandising, no, mate. No, that's an awful idea. Oh man, no. But I, I, I do think that a LAN is the is the correct way to go about it. But again, that's more money you're flying people internationally, visas and uh, permits to to travel. It's more money than people are willing to put into these kind of ventures. People want to take mm -hmm. the advertising money, put some into their pockets, put some into the into the office, and put some into the I mean, a, a ten thousand dollar price pool is is pennies compared to what will likely be going into the rest of the production. So well, the ESL Rennsport uh, price tag is what was it? Two hundred and fifty thousand euro. Yeah, think of how much investment and how much other money has been going through there to make that happen. And that's that's from a company trying to start out. That's from a company trying to get their their foot in the door. And Rensport is another thing that we could actually have a conversation about. Um, again, going ever so slightly off topic, just what is that going to be? Anyway. Yeah, I am nervous with the the Rensport stuff, spe specifically like the like blockchain integration that they're saying. I'm really curious how much they're going to try to stick to that with, you know, the, you know, the fact that the crypto market has absolutely crashed and sort of the worldwide sentiment at the moment is that oh man that was a terrible idea to try to make everything an nft wait 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 blockchain and crypto while they are together because they were systems that were developed together blockchain is not only crypto blockchain is a very good way to have a trail of proof when you move things digitally and i know for certain that banks are using blockchain so that they can know how the money moved from one point to the other when they are moving it digitally correct absolutely absolutely agree with you with you sir blockchain is not a toxic word it's it's a fine concept in theory it just needs to be applied right and up until now blockchain and in reality nfts haven't been applied in a realistic fashion people have just got the idea that it was it was a way that they could make money and that became the only way that it was used in, in reality if if it's used correctly so the way that i see to cody the way that i see them using blockchain is you have your liveries for argument's sake or your setups listed on a market and when you buy it you get a, a hash or a token it's it's no different to an authentication key that is linked directly mm -hmm. to that setup and if you were to copy that file send it to someone else they'd try to run it and they wouldn't be able to access it because it would be encrypted through this authentication token it creates a market for setup creators, livery designers, modders that has never existed before. It's it's eye racing, but with the the customizability of a seto corsa. And because it'll all be on that same central get that same central hub, they're keeping that part internal, it will be able to have we've we've looked at R Factor 2, how they've had to change the the way the game works to be able to get that content without owning the content. That'll all be baked in it'll just automatically sync your data with the server data. Yeah, you can't drive half the cars because you haven't paid the modder, but you can still see the cars. You can still access the tracks. We could live in a world where there are off-brand uh, off knockoffs of uh, Grand Valley from Gran Turismo or Trial Mountain. That's the world, that's the Ren spot I want to see. And one thing that they, at least the, the way I understood them, I haven't been able to talk to them directly, that they want to do is you're going to be able to own this 
special car like the car that mm. let's say uh, Verstappen drove on his uh, first yeah. win on Rennsport in, in, in Spa this very specific car because this very specific car as you say is marked by that authentication token so you know you you and only you have this car so they are trying to make mods in a way that are unique and therefore can be similar to what you would do in a real life car that's I am so excited that's the problem though i think that's dumb so okay. like that's that's uh, another point that's a fair point and that's another point completely yes. yeah so, like question I, i understand the viability of the concept i just don't like the concept <laughs> question do you think that skin trading in csgo is is stupid i mean yeah i mean i think you should just like if you want a thing that looks like a thing you can make it and put it in the game or you can find it and take it you know i create skins for you know a set of corsa i put them out in the world because yeah. i love the spirit of the game and if somebody wants something custom or their own to be manifested into the world i can make that and sell it to them Yeah, uh, and then it, what they do with it from there is, you know, I don't care. But you know, I've gotten my money for it, gotten so, my compensation, and there's there's more stuff out in the world. I don't think it should be, uh, you know, gatekeeped through a, a complex system of of computers keeping a hash of everything. So I think you're looking at it. Yes, yeah, I think you're looking at it through the CS:GO side of it, um, where as you said it's gatekeeping it's because i think that there would be nothing stopping you from selling your skin that you created on the ren sport marketplace for free in which case it'll just generate a million tokens and people will download the delivery and move on but what you'll be able to do is go to say someone wants you to design a livery for them from the ground up you'll be able to use the... I think Rensport said that they were going to keep the design tools free. Mm. At one yes. moment. And and you're going to be able to use exactly the same design tools as the Rensport developers uh, use. At least that's what they've said. Now, by design tools, are we talking about like... Yes, but yes so what we... this would, Everything. Yes, yeah, so what... Software, software and, and graphics. Oh, okay. So like you could make custom cars and you can make cut yeah. exactly exactly oh. so this and is tracks so there was there the way that it's being laid out at the moment is that you will be able to create an entire workflow in ren sport and and then make money from it i mean let's see what what they end up implementing of course because they are already months behind what they wanted to do but i know that from software development yeah that happens i just i do want to comment there aesthetic their their brand identity is so pretty i just i love it <laughs> it looks so good just a total side note not relevant to any of the the meat and <laughs> potatoes of it all but it's so good i love their like uh ui design it's just hmm. from, from what... that's a graphic designer and you talking <laughs> <I was> gonna, <laughs> the, the thing is as well is that your perspective comes from a from a graphic designer perspective for mm -hmm. for the average sim racer who doesn't even know how to set up a car for argument's sake imagine if you could go into iRacing and buy for a couple of pounds a setup that is that has a video attached to it that shows you the ideal lap that can be gained on that setup people are paying people are paying for setups for ACC and that's yeah. just GT3 and for i racing yeah exactly so why it's already being done what all Rensport is doing is creating that that paper trail as to where those setups are coming from rewarding or t attempting to reward the members of the community that are contributing those and then hopefully keeping some investment in the platform because that's what we're talking about here it's not a game it's a platform that ho hopefully there will be there'll be investment for years to come. We'll see. Well, I know we haven't unless... even seen a closed beta, oh, even less an open beta. So, yeah, we'll, I, well, I hope that whoever is creating things for this is creating, you know, not GT3 stuff because we have enough of that. <laughs> And right now I I struggle to like 
Rinsport because I, I'm not a big fan of the the. It's a digital product, and so we're gonna like make artificial things so that it's artificially scarce as opposed to being freely available in the in the you know spirit of community. And then on top of that, it's like well, there's all of that restriction just to drive GT3. You know, this is a great segue to what. Uh, another point, an- another theme that I wanted us to address in this podcast, and that <laughs> is the death of touring car series in real life versus the love for GT3 on Spa or Monza. Like, I remember it was last the last stream, the, the last IndyCar stream or two streams ago when I was commenting that WTCR was dead and you were extremely surprised, Cody, <laughs> sadly surprised and, and sad and rightfully so because WTCR is dead. It, it closed in, in autumn of last year and at least for this year and until somebody finds a way to put it alive again, there is no WTCR anymore dtm which had these wonderful class one cars had to move to gt3 cars and a couple of years after that they sold the brand dtm to adac who i suppose are gonna put it together with their adac series which are cheaper not that complex gt3 cars so all over the world we're seeing gt3 or touring cars even serious dying on the other hand open up in any sim open up a server with gt3 on spa or gt3 in (laughs) in monza and in five seconds you'll have a full grid now where does that come from people prefer to drive gt3s on a sim rather than watch gt3s drive around i have a theory regarding this and i'm sorry for the resident american in the room but the easier the car and the easier the track the better the driving you take a, a nascar for example is easy is in a relative term there's not that much aero on nascars i think that's fair to say and the the tracks the ovals are very very simple when you put it down on paper but what that means is that the competition is so much closer because you're not making mistakes in the corners you're making mistakes because you misjudged where your front bumper was you're making mistakes where your spotter hasn't found hasn't seen someone beside you or something like that it's the simpler the track the better the racing and i think that's what we're seeing is people know spa and people and monza is an easy track i'm surprised that we haven't seen indianapolis especially in acc become the a beloved child in that way as well because that track is very very simple so you 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 can focus on your lines you can focus on on actually racing rather than which curb is going to throw me into the abyss that's because the indianapolis that acc has is more complex than the normal roval that other other sims have but that's just an aside oh yeah absolutely so that's a fair point that's a really fair point the i i think that people have gotten used to gt3s it's a nice mix of aerodynamic versus mechanical grip as a class you have great big behemoths like the m4 the m6 the aston martin the bentley enormous touring car like gts my favorite boat absolutely absolutely you aren't alone in that and i will uh we'll we'll uh, i i I like the bentley as well i really like the look of it that's a proper gt car and then you have the barely disguised supercars in the mclaren the ferrari the honda i mean the honda is is the closest to a touring car that's that or a gt car that's not a gt car in the way that it is built and handles but some of the cars that are now being put into the gt3 class they're not gt cars you you couldn't get in that the 720s the 296 cars like that you couldn't jump in one of those and drive across america you'd run out of water you'd run out of clothes you you can't you'd run, you'd run out of fuel <laughs> yeah that too no but assuming assuming that for example you you wanted to do a tour of route 66 or something like that or the the european equivalent you want to drive from england to 
uh, to the Nurburgring, to, Nord- to the Nordschleife or something like that. A, a pilgrimage that p- gen- people year-round take. They, you couldn't do that in a Ferrari or in a McLaren because you'd get uncomfortable in a couple of hours. You'd need to stop, get out, have a walk, have a stretch. But in a Bentley, in the Mercedes even... The Mercedes AMG has a has has the boot still, and because they are the more simple cars to drive, that's why they're they're that's where the appeal is coming from. With so why don't people want to watch that? Because it's everywhere. And with regards to the death of touring cars, I can tell you exactly why WTCR died, and it's because you can either take a WTCR car for a hundred or for hundred and thirty, you can go to GT three or GT four. So the SRO, you mean? Yeah, mm-hmm. the the money that they were spending on WTCR was not worth it. BTCC has got a grid of thirty six cars this season because they have cut oh, wow. yes because they've cut back costs they have a single homologated engine all of the chassis are different but they are balanced against each other and with the hybrid it's a, a single pack unit even those costs are going up but compared to WTCR it's 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 night and day i think it was Cody you have a take on that you know no i'm in agreement with you you know you, you, you said the uh, apologies to the american but like you know i get it like there is a big reason that uh, nascar games are so popular in america and it's because it is the easiest thing to handle on a controller is going around uh, on an oval and most people, you know, starting out with racing games back in the, the day, it was, you know, your Ridge Racers and your, you know, Formula One 2000 and your, you know, any number of other games, your Gran Turismo's, that sort of stuff. And for a lot of people uh, who were into NASCAR in America, they just bought NASCAR games because, well, I want to drive what what's there. And then, yeah, it's, it's easy and a good way to get good close racing uh, because it is... Easy to learn and hard to master. So it is good to, you know, get yourself on the grid. And it's a lot of learning once you realize that it's not as easy as it looks to really, <laughs> you know, really be good at it. And, Especially you know, the strategy. I, I think that, you know, that that's a, a little bit of a tangent from, you know, GT3 everywhere. But I think that a part of that goes into it's easier to drive a GT3 car than it is to drive a lot of other types of cars any other cars yeah gte is my my yes. my child my baby i absolutely love gte i have a crap ton of diecast models 118 scale diecast models of gte cars i'm a big corvette racing fan they've been in gte for you know most of my adult life all of my adult life and they are moving from gte to gt3 in imsa and then soon in wec well the difference are they doing that the yeah the difference between gte and gt3 is gte cars are faster and they don't have abs they do have traction control like gt3 cars but they don't have abs and so if you're a gentleman driver and you also don't want to bear the brunt of the cost of a gte car because they do cost more as well then you are going to lean towards gt3 because you're more likely to you know be able to get your your dentist's daytime job having self around a (laughs) sebring or a daytona or a mosport park or you know any of those in a gt3 more than you can in a gte or any other so yeah of course it's going to be more popular but but the caveat i will say or, or i guess the thing i'll say to that is yeah but grow up this isn't and the teams and the teams cost less because you don't need to have the team six hours for the race plus whatever else it takes or 12 hours or 24 hours for the race where you not only have one team but you end up having different teams because who is awake 24 hours so yeah the the races on gt3 are shorter and you have the team for a weekend and that's it and you don't need to have the team or two teams for the whole of the race yeah, and and in real life, obviously, this only applies to i racing when it comes to when it comes to the conversation we're going to have. But if you are going to buy a car, you want it to be versatile. You want to be able to take it around the world and wherever you. Again, talking about the dentist's salary, you want to be able to take that one car, maintain it, look after it, and take it on several series around the world. Creventic, SRO, ADAC all have 
Am series where you can now run GT3 cars. So why would you... This is the reason in real life why it's becoming so dominant, because people are taking those single cars and running them around the world. So why... Okay, so they, they are driving them, but people are not watching those races because if they would be watching those races, the series would not be dying. Because we know that TV is the big spender, is yes. where you, you, you end up getting the money, where you, you get the sponsors because the sponsors are going to be on TV and so on. So I found that... Oh wow, I'm going to I'm going to give a compliment to ACC. Uh the so ACC has done one thing when it comes to uh to racing is that it has brought attention to GT3 as a platform. And people are now watching are actually watching especially on YouTube streams and the like. People are now watching live streams because their favorite car the Honda NSX GT3 or the Ferrari GT3 or the Lamborghini Huracan GT3. They're in those races and they are they have imprinted on those cars to the point where I'm a I'm a Lamborghini driver. So anywhere where I see a Lamborghini GT3 car, I'm going to support the Lamborghini because that's the car that I drive in Assetto Corsa. So I don't think the GT3 is necessarily dying as far as the the viewership is concerned. And as far as we can, or as far as I can see, it's only so growing. So what you're saying is the SRO is cannibalizing other touring car series at the end of the day. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what's, what's happening is there's a distillation of the classes into classes that people are able to afford, classes that people aren't able to afford, and the ones that aren't able to... Because it's not a simple pay money, do race. It's a... You pay for the car, then you have to pay for the maintenance, then you have to pay for the entry fee, then you have to pay for the transport. Now, if you can maintain the one car, get really good at maintaining that one car, it reduces costs. If you can get really good at transporting the car, stripping it down for transport and taking a smaller truck, for example, that's less cost. And where sanctioning bodies are, are now going towards GT3, they're getting more reward there's more drivers coming because they're going to gt3 so of course they're going to reinforce and other sanctioning bodies are seeing oh well they've just made that change to GT gt3 let's do the same and we saw it with imsa they were arguably one of the leaders they saw the growth of gt3 as a, as a class and said yeah we're going that way because that's where the market's going and that was what they said that was that was their reason for taking gte away and take changing it to gt3 pro and gt3 or gtd pro and gtd regular is yeah this is where the market is so this is where we're going and it's worked 24 cars i think in gtd at daytona mm -hmm. and even more at sebring there is then people were watching of course people were watching but people people were watching because it's daytona because it's sebring it's it's the big race in america and you you go there for a week and Sebring also had the draw of the WEC and hypercars, for goodness sake, the, the debut of the of the Cadillac. Cadillac being represented in WEC, I think, is massively underrated as far as the attention that's being drawn to it. I think that the entirety of America is behind that zero two Cadillac. Might very well be. So, it, it, cla cla class one, you will only be able to see that in Japan. Oh well, Super GT. But again, it's popular. It draws enough people yeah. in Japan. And oh yeah. Because Japan are still relatively isolationist, they don't care about the rest of the world. They don't care about yeah. other markets. So of course they're going to do what they want. As it's freaking awesome, you know. Like, why, why would you watch anything else? <laughs> oh, I totally agree. Absolutely agree. I still want, I still want Mazda to come back and throw a silly tiny engine into a D, into a LMDH and and take it around the world and whoop everybody else's butt again. But I'm biased. It's a very pretty car. <laughs> Speaking of very pretty, this podcast is called Romcom. And where on earth did that name come from, Mister Serta? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so. 
the long story because we have enough time you were pushing for 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 Broadcast. us to do a podcast and i and i was like okay so how we do do we do it and then i started thinking and i think i put in our chat that we that we three have our our uh, team chat i put something like 14 or 20 names yeah. that that i just Not started perfect. writing down stupid intelligent whatever and you guys reduced it to i think at the end it was four or five i put those to to vote on the patreon thank by the way patreon.com rom rom so thank you very much patreons for supporting us and for voting on a name and out came romcast which was going to be the name of of uh, the podcast but then a couple of days as after we had done all the whole shebang, my girlfriend came with the idea. Let's call it Romcom. And Cody, Cody, you found the idea cool. Cody said, "Yeah, but if we call it that, people are not gonna be imagining that we are talking about cars." So we changed it into Romcoms. Yes, like it's the communications of Rom. And then I put that to the patrons to decide do you want it romcast or do you want want romcom and the majority of the patrons said oh yeah romcom is better than romcast so that's how we ended up with romcoms and the lesson from this is always listen to your girlfriends gents because they're normally right <laughs> at least it's it's a very punny name yes absolutely if you have any other suggestions of course get comments below with this is this is pilot this is this is romcom's pilot but it's <laughs> it's hopefully an opportunity where we get to sit down and talk and and just go over the month's news basically things that are, things 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 that have happened things that are of interest things that we're angry about which i'm sure won't just be me at some point yeah i, I think <laughs> you know also there's not too much i mean there is it's out there but you know there's not too much uh with regards to sim racing news in long form and you know of course we are the channel bringing you the joy of sim racing uh we have the weekly sim racing news and so of course it's on brand who would who else would do it uh and who would do it so well than uh than us yeah and that is going to be the focus as well is to bring you the news and it's more the op-ed of of the news whereas the the weekly the weekly news gives you the news this is what we think of the news and whether it's good or bad and there's a lot of news for us to catch up on so <laughs> if everybody wants to watch this kind of content we have more than enough opinions for you yeah there are three people five opinions on the same on the same subject of course oh absolutely and some sometimes we even agree oh yeah yeah don't let that happen again no 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 never 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 be uh, never happen Oh, believe me, I can be a contrarian enough for all of us. Well, of course, you're 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 American and Texan. That's contrarian enough. Oh, good grief! How on earth are we going to fight against that? <laughs> Texas okay. is the uh, Texas is the the state to America as America is to the rest of the world. But anyway, uh, kind of. <laughs> and and we we discussed we discussed a couple of days ago that uh, there's even very cool jazz coming from Texas. I mean, yes. Ornette Coleman comes from Texas. I was flabbergasted because i didn't know that yeah uh, so i guess side note this is not in our notes or anything but <laughs> for context uh the other day we were talking about something or another and uh i had brought up or somebody had brought up jazz music in texas and sort of was like oh yeah texas so known for its jazz and so i just like dropped him a bunch of things of like jazz musicians from texas here's all the like you know jazz scene news in texas like there is jazz in Texas. There's a lot of jazz in Texas. And so I, I think I blew Serta's mind a little bit because it was a bit of a slow burn where it was like, oh, okay, yeah. And then I guess once he clicked on the link and started like looking through stuff, he's like, oh, I recognize that guy. I recognize that guy. I recognize that guy. That guy's from Texas? What do you know? It was great. On the other hand, if you think Texas, it's not like you think jazz. It's like if you think new orleans is not like you think death metal although there are great death metal bands in uh, new orleans i have been listening to a lot of metal recently it has been <laughs> it has been really really nice to get back to my roots on that one okay so coming back to sim racing i have one question for you guys that i would like to to close this podcast with is what is your favorite sim the one 
sim that you have the go-to sim and what is your favorite sim cade is that of course a oh. uh, favorite sim? <laughs> don't you mean your favorite sim cade with your terrible tire model i mean you can you can <laughs> argue or whatever like I've, I've shown it already. Shortcomings. but like you know it's no. great because i have a a you know of course my my custom modded install of a set of corsa i can drive with you know very good examples of of each car in a bunch of different classes basically anything from anywhere at any point in time on any track i want with a a reasonable level of realness and detail that it is it is you know convincing enough for for just about anybody more realistic you know even you will will agree i could than than any you know simcade or project cars or, or you know any any of that it is not perfect but the most comprehensive racing simulator the most com it, it is a compendium of motorsport that can be driven at home and and i i think that the the spirit behind the modern community like that is where everyone from r factor went from gtr2 modding gt legends modding all of those og moddable platform sims they all went to aceto corsa and made it into what it is today it is absolutely amazing you can do day night any weather you can race on a tornado thanks to custom shaders patch and uh sol and all that sort of great stuff it is you know like you say i could not perfect there's there's things especially with the ai that i'm not a huge fan of but it is for for what i want it to be absolutely amazing and getting better every day and you can even drive a formula one on a toilet or a banana on the new machine absolutely or drive uh any and every uh alfa romeo tz from the targa florio uh check out my my resources on race department <laughs> <laughs> and your favorite sim kate would be project cars 2 actually oh, I, right. I, I name dropped it there uh, a little bit earlier but uh, i think that as far as being a a complete package uh, AMS2 has probably surpassed it in quality but Project Cars 2 was my ticket in to sim racing and for what I needed it for for what I wanted it for it did everything that I you know wanted on a PS4 with a T300 RS hooked up to it and uh, it did it with a reasonable level of accuracy and detail it was uh, the, it was in depth and it had uh, this is the big thing for me, that career, that like driver career where you can, mm -hmm. you know, progress through the ranks of like, you know, cup series and touring cars and graduate to GT3s and then LMP1s and, and all the, the top class formula series and that sort of stuff. So I think that Project Cars 2, as far as being a complete package, uh, takes the cake for me for Simcades. But I would stop short of calling it a sim because of things like the the simplicity of the driving dynamics okay your favorite sim and sim kate i think i gave it away in the with with the entire model reference r factor 2 is one of those games that is a nightmare 80 percent of the time and it's <laughs> you can awful. say that again it's awful to get it running and you've got to, you've got to manage so much of it i currently have a bug at the moment where when i go into the pits i don't just see my pit box i see all of the pit boxes with anybody who has a pit requested at the moment for some reason but when you're driving when you get through all of those bugs when you get through all of the effort that you put in to actually get to the track and get driving there's nothing like it I've I've said to a couple of people in the past that yes, the mods that are out there for Assetto Corsa are more plentiful, but there isn't really a mod for R Factor 2 that you couldn't download and immediately make a race series out of. The the ones that I have been desperate to get enough interest together to make a race series of is the Palatov D4s, which are hmm. a little larger than a go-kart, have a turbocharged Hayabusa engine in it. Uh, and we did a video on those. And four-wheel drive. By far and away the most fun you could ever have on four wheels. You you cannot beat that. We did a video on exactly that mod. Yeah. So good. 
And it's not even the thing is, it's not a good mod, but the sim saves it. The sim is so comprehensive that you can make a relatively basic mod and it still performs, it still creates good racing. And what I was going to do was uh, multi-class them with Formula Predators, which are 600cc bike engine, tiny little formula cars. And when I was testing them, the Palatovs obviously have all of the speed, but the Predators could have a higher apex speed. So it would create it's a, it was about a 10 second delta around Daytona for these cars. So around a 2.4 mile circuit, around 10 seconds is a really, really good delta for lap for, for gaps in pace. But the actual apex speed of the pres of the of the Palatovs was lower. So it would create hey. drama and tension. Hey, talk to the ASRC guys. Maybe they're, they're they they'll do a series based on that. I wouldn't be able to they're commentate. Crazy enough. I wouldn't be able to commentate that because I would be driving it. Okay. When it comes to yeah, when it comes to I I realized that someone uh, one of my one of my friends laid it out really really well recently because he's an i racing uh, buff. He's been driving an i racing since 2019, which is oh my goodness, almost f all getting towards five years ago now. But in i racing, you pay in money. In R Factor Two, you pay in blood. At the end of the day, <laughs> but at the end of the day, those two cannot be beaten absolutely cannot be beaten as far as i'm concerned and unfortunately as far as the simcade is concerned i need to i need to agree with cody uh, project cars 2 was was a very very good development on project cars 1 it was a massive success for for slightly mad studios whether it was deserved or not and in the end actually paved the way for what project cars or their buyout by codemasters and then codemasters the value that they had to offer with slightly mad included their value to ea that all came from project cars 2 and mm, i think the value to ea from codemasters came from the f1 also license that. yeah but both of those both of those were were in the works at a similar time and codemasters had to have informed ea that they were looking to to acquire slightly mad studios and i i choose to believe that there was at least some part of the reasoning for codemasters now being part of the ea quote unquote family let's 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 go a little bit through the to to memory lane yes it was so that Codemasters had already bought SMS yes. and therefore had already the, the IP of Project Cars. I then they were apart, Y2K, Y2K was in conversations with Codemasters to buy them out. And all of a sudden, maybe because Y2K had interest, EA came into the conversation and <sighs> took... Codemasters away from Y2K. Oh, that's awful. We really are living in the worst timeline, aren't we? Well, anyway. they had they had more money to to offer. Oh, and cool. as if I'd be somebody with uh, enough stocks in Codemasters, and somebody offers me, I don't know, I, I don't know the numbers right now. I would have to look them up. Uh, somebody offers me one point two per per stock option, and uh, somebody 5. else offers me two point five. I'm going for the two point five. Oh yeah, absolutely. For the for the people who. Who money is the only the only important thing? No, I absolutely agree. But it still it doesn't mean it doesn't detract from the fact that we lost an absolutely incredible sim and a lot of a lot of sim racers. Now that Project Cars Two has been taken off the uh, off the Steam marketplace, there's a generation of sim racers who will never know just how good it was to be able to jump from the WRXs, the mighty. 600 horsepower WRXs, which if you do still have Project Cars 2 in your library, I don't know if AMS2 has any off-road stuff. There, I, there's, a, there's about a week that you can set in the calendar where snow will appear on all of the tracks. Take, do yourself a favor, take any of the rallycross cars and go around Spa. The tires will last <laughs> two laps, but they will be the two best laps you've ever spent in a sim. Sounds like fun. Yeah, Certainly. I can't say I've done that specifically, but Why? as someone familiar with the sim, like, that sounds great. I've got to go yes. do that. Yes, you do. 
it's great it's so good and it, it just gets better from there so like the 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 turbo charge the silly prototypes that they had with the turbos and things like that that you could barely keep hold of the uh this they had the the proper lmp ones in the audi and the porsche as well just absolutely incredible work and so the force feedback and and the yeah. and the physics were crap especially no, the, the tires so I have a Logitech G29, so I am not an authority on on good force feedback. Uh, but as far as I was concerned, it, com it communicated more than I get from ACC, and that's oh, okay. that was that's better than yeah. It it was the thing that kept me away from a set of course from the first place was Project Cars Two, <laughs> and then going from Project Cars Two to R Factor Two, it was a lot more like a step forward rather than a set of Corsa, which felt like a step back. And even now with the ACC and all of the work they've done, it doesn't feel as good as R Factor 2 does. It's it's a different class. It's a completely different class. Serta, what about yourself? So my favorite sim, my go-to sim, I have to say it's uh, Automobilista 2. Yeah. I already loved Automobilista because it had stuff that nobody else had. All those South American tracks that are great i i have a blast every time i take the mini to buenos aires and on the other hand the physics model they have implemented with the 1.4 that came out in august and beyond that is cannot be compared to anything else they they have things like like uh, the torque from the motor that uh, how it, it it moves the body of the car yeah. and the force feedback when i was using a g29 with uh, automobilista 2 the force feedback was not good mm. uh, the physics you you notice that the physics behind it were good now that i have a simu cube uh, on that the force feedback is excellent i have to say even if i love assetto corsa and i've published more than enough mods reviews on uh, on the channel about Assetto Corsa the force feedback on Automobilista 2 is uncomparable to anyone else even R Factor 2 which I agree with you Ike is quite good on that so I have to say if if I just want to to move myself around while standing still i go to automobilista 2 i i don't know i open up buenos aires or or uh, Belochita or one of those tracks that nobody else has and i sit in from from a from something like the 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 inters or stock cars brazil or just a mini i sit on those and have uh, lots of fun even uh, in a formula one don't call them formula one i think the formula ones that automobilista 2 has are the best that you can find in any sim be it mods be it not mods so i have lots of fun with automobilista 2 not not saying that i don't that i don't like to drive the others because my goal is every day of the week to be driving at least for a couple of days a different sim so that i i i, I keep myself actual in the yeah. driving of them all but the one that for me and that's a question of taste feels the best and makes more fun is automobilista 2 and I, with regards to yeah go ahead you have just reminded me of a thing mentioning the mini name s2 that was the thing that that project cars 2 and i have no doubt that ams2 is is leagues ahead of it now did better than and there's another one of those things that it did best than any other sim that i've that i've driven i haven't tried i racing yet but that's the only sim i haven't tried front wheel drive cars project cars 2 ams that engine is just incredible for front wheel drive cars try the wtcrs of race room yes yeah slightly different slightly different because they're custom built chassis that are designed to to be front wheel drive rather than stock cars that happen to be front wheel drive mm -hmm. and my favorite sim kit of them all is breakfast first of all it's dirt racing which you don't have only have in iRacing for now. I hope that the adrenaline pack from Automobilista 2 is going to be uh, bringing dirt racing, but you have dirt racing in breakfast. The force feedback is better than I would expect from a sim kit. And even if you DNF, you have lots of fun. Uh, Cody and I have been racing here and there with breakfast. And Cody, of course, is a much better driver than I am, but 
you have fun because the the graphics of 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 destruction in Wreckfest are fun. Hitting each other is fun, and as I said, even if you DNF, you just love it off completely. It's also so, like it is one of two with Beam and G with Beam and G Drive, which uh, we also cover on the channel. Yeah, uh, somewhat that has soft body physics collision model. Yeah, yep. and that is amazing. Not just for the like visual deformation. But also, like, the actual, like, bumping into each other itself. Like, if you collide in basically most sims, you bounce off of each other. And yeah, then you'll yeah. pick up damage, right? But in Wreckfest, you'll collide into each other, and it will crunch the car. And so you won't bounce off of each other so much as just ripple off mm -hmm. of each other. And so you can still, like, do wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing and, you know, hit each other. <laughs> you know, scrape up against each other without it just being, like, instant death. You can kind of, you know, scrape and rub and, and get close to the other driver in actually a more realistic way than I think you can in most sims. Says the Assetto Corsa driver. You can do, yeah. you can, you can do that in our factor too. Because the netcode is so good and the phys the tire physics are so good that you okay, can you can't you cannot tell me R factor two and netcode in the same sentence. <laughs> oh, I can when when the competition is ACC and and I racing. Oh, I can absolutely have that conversation. R factor two is the one that I've had the worst netcode, and it might be because you know I'm in North America. Yes, but <laughs> you know, for for my experience, I've had better experience with a set of Corsa netcode and R factor two netcode, and those are the two that I've had the most experience with. Yeah, we have a religious war. <laughs> easy, easy. With it's it's so simple. Uh, that's because R factor two simulates more, so it requires more data, and obviously there's going to be some people who are going to appreciate that. Uh, you must have a skill issue if uh if the if your internet's not good enough i've got gigabit internet <laughs> the difference yep. is there's an atlantic ocean in between me yep. and the server definite skill issue 100 <laughs> percent definitely certified skill issue i think is the word now oh goodness all right and with those words of war, <laughs> tribes clashing each other, when two tribes go to war, oh, we would rebel. like to thank you for listening to these podcasts. If you want to support us, patreon.com romrom, we'd be very thankful. If you want to watch what we do, youtube.com romrom, W-R-O-M, W-R-O-M is where you should go. And of course, continue listening to these podcasts because as you can hear we've had a ton of fun and until the next time save fuel collect pickup and we'll see each other on the podium thank you for listening bye bye